I wanted to talk to you guys today about the gravity flyer and I need you guys to understand something. A lot of people ask, is there a vortex in the gravity flyer? The answer to that is yes, there is a vortex in the center of the gravity flyer. It shows up when you start messing with the Tesla coil on this thing. However, there's a lot of understanding that goes into some of this. So let's just start with a high voltage and what it's doing. So a lot of people misunderstand this. They just put in high voltage and it's got a lot of heat in it. So it's got a lot of amps into it. Completely wrong way to go. You want a magnetic field, but you don't want it in the beginning. You want a charged state in the beginning. What, how do you get to a charged state? Well, you have to thin out the uh, electricity coming through it. So in order to do that, you need to put it at a high amount of uh, frequency then that lowers the amps. So when you do that, you get to a charged state. Now you could put it in full charge state by getting that amps down to like a fraction of a milliamp and it'll bring it into a complete charged state. Now you can go a little bit higher to put it into a static state. So where it's just throwing out energy into the air and it's actually making the air energized. And that's what Alexi's doing here. So he's not completely in a charged state, but he's in a state of electricity in the air. So he's got a static electricity brewing. Now, it'll automatically convert into a magnetic state as you add heat to the system. So with that and the understanding of the high voltage, let's move on to the main part of what makes this vortex happen. It's the Tesla coil. Now, this is something that you're really going to have to understand by building the Tesla coil and doing it. This is not an average Tesla coil. It is not the way that it's working. You can basically take a Tesla coil and make it spark, or you can put out energy from it in a great distance. But that's not what's going on in here. This Tesla coil is acting differently. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can go on Gerbenikoff's work, and you can basically build a high voltage field positive, a high voltage field negative, put the Tesla coil in the center, and then it'll produce a vortex in it. And as soon as that vortex goes from a cold energy from your Tesla coil to a hot energy in the center, boom, it'll create lift. That's one way of doing it. You could do it another way, and I believe this is the way Hutchison was doing it. He takes his Tesla coil and makes a bipolar Tesla coil. Now you have both sides. One side can create heat when you want it, and one side can create the cold when you want it. And you're going to be able to change in between the two. The factors don't change here. You're going from a cold system to a hot system. How does Alexi do it? It's in its feedback. It's a cold system originally when you put in your Tesla coil. Now, it turns to heat as soon as you get feedback. What is the feedback? When you push energy back to the Tesla coil, it makes it not oscillate. When it doesn't oscillate, it heats up your number one coil. Your number one coil then explodes and puts all that heat along with the energy back into the system and turns a cold energy into a hot energy and there you go you create lift again however you have to build this vortex correctly so in order to do that your high voltage has to be in a static state now a lot of things out there you see in ufos and you hear about them you're getting a lot of energy in the air that's the static state now, it's just above a charge state. What do I mean by that? Basically, I'm taking the really, really fraction of a milliamp in a charge state, and I'm bringing it up to a few milliamps in a high voltage state or in a charge, excuse me, not in a charge state, but in a static state. You're going to be in that static state right there. Now, what happens when you change the energy a little bit more? As I get the amps to one amp, Okay, it's going to change to a magnetic state. The way you could do that is put, put heat in the system. So, we know that Tesla coil feedback put heat in the system. It's also putting heat in your high voltage, which is flipping that field. Now, what happens when you do that? When you add heat to a cold system, what does it do? It uses the energy of the cold system. So, whatever is building up inside the vortex in the center, it's now using it. So as the vortex goes, it's going to make this thing probably 10 to 100 times more powerful simply because it's in the vortex. Now, outside of the vortex is always hot. Inside is always cold. So 
when you start talking about how to do this in a physical manner in the gravity flyer, we have to understand the Tesla coil is a longitudinal wave. However, when it's put into the gravity flyer, the plate is transverse. So it'll make the transverse wave this way. However, when you put heat into it, it'll turn back into the longitudinal wave that you want. That's the convergence. Now, again, when it goes like this, it's not just going up, it's going down as well. So your high voltage now is now converted. Get it? Your high voltage is now converted to magnetism when that Tesla coil converts from a transverse wave to a longitudinal wave it can automatically convert your high voltage into magnetism. It's a simple understanding if you get it. If you don't, it's going to be like nutcase working on something. You just have to know it's going to automatically flip it for you. You don't have to start messing with the way the Tesla coil is oriented. You don't have to do anything else. You have to understand that it's physically going to do that inside the craft. Now... We understand the Tesla coil to be the absolute key to lift. I could tell you this from many years of doing this, guys. It's not the high voltage. The high voltage is a means to an end. It is not the high voltage. The high voltage has to be understood, but it also has to be built the correct way. We start building things with ZVSs and we start to forget what we're trying to achieve here. The craft automatically corrects itself. Understand that. It's an automatically correcting system. So if you force something into it, it's not going to work correctly. So we have to go from a ZVS to a single MOSFET or a transistor and then create the energy into the flyback that way. We can also use an AC flyback with a voltage multiplier if you understand distance and direction. Now I want to address something on the gravity flyer. I've asked this question a lot. And I finally have the answer. When you create high voltage and you want to create a plasma spray, what you have to do is put things about two and a half inches apart. One side has a heavier mass than the other side, and then it'll go directionally. Boom, straight over, positive to negative all the time. And it'll make a nice plasma flow and you'll see it in a nice, beautiful bridge look. That's what you're trying to do here, okay? You're trying to create that. Now, how did Alexi do it? The outside ring on the craft was his dividing point. So if you have the field here and you put a screwdriver in the center of it, right? What does that do? It jumps to the screwdriver, then to the other side. That's pretty simple to understand. Well, when he had that outside lip, it would go to the outside lip and then back down to the bottom plate. So you're doing this, all right? In his newer models, he takes the top plate and bottom plate and extends them out. So he's getting them for their bigger radius. And he takes his center plate and moves it in. Why? Because he's using it directly to go down to the center plate as his screwdriver and then down to the bottom plate. Understand this. He takes his high voltage and he turns it on very slowly. He forms the voltage. So it comes down from the top plate to the center plate. Then it goes to the bottom plate. So he's got it formed. As he increases it, it'll move to the outside of that center plate until it gets to the edge. When the Tesla coil is turned on, it will form a field around the center plate. So if your high voltage is not formed thick enough and has not run long enough, it will not form correctly. What it'll do when the Tesla coil, if it is formed correctly, is it'll push it out. The Tesla coil makes the energy in a field to push that high voltage out. So you go from flat like this with the center plate intersecting to a point where it's like this and it goes around it. Perfect. You've created your field correctly. Now, you could say, well, why don't you run the disc where they're on the outside? Because in the structure that he put it in, it's an absolute nightmare. It's a complete restructure of the whole craft. In order to do this, all he needed to do was figure out a way to bridge it. So on the original, he has the outside lift. It is your bridge. Now, the 
inside now when he does this when the new one like i said he just has to get it around to curve it it starts here and as the tesla coil is turned on it pushes it it's pushing it until it forms this we are simply looking at the bubble right here between the top and bottom plate with the center plate inside that's his whole area now it'll go out a little bit like this and that's because He's adding the Tesla coil. And as he adds more Tesla coil to it, you can do the field and push it out. Now, with all that said, let's get back to the vortex. It's very important you'd never use neodymium magnets. Why? It's heating up the center plate. In a cold system, as soon as you heat it up, you ruin it. When you put in heat to a cold system, you're pulling the energy out of it. That is a big no-no. So what is it doing? As you're trying to create the vortex, you're automatically stealing the energy from the vortex by applying the heat from the magnets. Let that sink in for a minute. You are, in one instance, taking away the energy that you need automatically. You can't get away with that. It won't work. You cannot take neodymium magnets and heat up the center plate in a cold system because you're triggering the energy before the vortex has formed. You cannot do that. You have to use ceramic magnets. You have to use something that's going to spread out the energy. The whole reason they're there, guys, is to pull the energy from the ground, to get that ether in it. That's what you're doing. You're trying to create an ether. You don't want a little field on the top of the plate. You want to big field that interacts with your static electricity you want this thing like i said to go around the whole craft like that that's the reason for the magnets in there like that i've reduced mine to almost nothing in there for the magnets because all i need is that effect now that i know what's going on i can change it a little bit in order to get a better effect out of it i just need the magnets to be able to put in there put enough eddy current to go ahead and couple the field now is it going to couple through the center plate with the anti-current? No. I don't want that interaction. I don't want it heating up. I want, just like John Bandini does, I want it just enough to get in there and then immediately dissipate. Enough amp in there, just immediately dissipate. That's it. I'm not looking for it to get heat on the center plate. I don't want to trigger the system before it's built. So, as I build this field up with the high voltage and stuff, I'm starting to create that vortex. Okay, I'm starting to create the energy on the outside for it, right? When I turn on my Tesla coil, now my energy goes to the center. Now I'm creating the center of my vortex right here. I'm now working in the right spot. That is the true understanding of what's going on here. As it forms in the center, I don't want to trigger it early. I want to know that the vortex is working. How do I know that? As I turn the dial on the piezoelectricity on the ultrasound device, I can hear it click. I know one side is my hot, one side is my cold of my vortex. I'm simply moving it in between. So if I say this is the center of my vortex, I'm moving that just like this. That's all I'm doing. Now I just need to find which one I want. Do I want the outside hot? Do I want the inside cold? That's it. It clicks. It'll tell you it's there. You don't have to, you know, overthink this. You just have to find which one you want. Now, the higher sounding click is the inside of the vortex. It's that simple. Set it to clicks that higher sound. You're inside the vortex now. That's all you got to do. When you tap this piezo button, by the way, it's tapping the center plate right dead in the center. It pulls it just like this. That's what it's doing. It jumps. That's it. You can hear it when I push the button. Tink, tink, tink. The piezo buzzer doesn't do that on its own. It clicks. It click, 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 click. Why can Alexi do this by ear? Because he understands the sounds. He understands what he's listening for in this thing. He takes this thing, goes click, click. Okay, I'm in the vortex now. Now I need to apply heat. So I now need enough of this to be able to get a feedback into the Tesla coil. I always say that I want to take my Tesla coil and create two different energies out of it. And I do. It, it comes to an understanding of this. 
I want to trigger the vortex when I want. I don't want it to be in the system of self-recovery. I want to be able to trigger it when I want. Now, eventually I want it in the system of self-recovery, but I don't want it now. I want it in the system of simple, I tell it when to go, and I tell it when to jump, and I tell it when to recover, not having it do it on its own. So, the, you say, well, you push the button, that's got to be how you do it, right? Well, yes, in a self-recovery system. What I'm saying is I'm decoupling those two things from being the same thing to two different things. And, and you have to do that. You have to decouple things in this whole system. If you continue to couple them together, not understanding every effect when you decouple them, you'll never get to the next level on doing this. So as I do this, what I'm trying to map out here is something very simple. I want to put this thing on an Arduino and I want to be able to do it just automatically. And you cannot do that if you do not understand the point in which they react. So that's all I'm looking for here. I decoupled it. I have it where I can now push a button and I can go into two states. It's a toggle switch. So I have part of my coil here, the rest of my coil here. And it came in a happy accident. My coil fell over and busted and the wire messed up, you know, right at the bottom. And sometimes it just works to your advantage. So what did I do? I just put a switch in there. All you're doing is in your Tesla coils is capacitance. That's it. How much capacitance do you have? Can you take two different wire windings and put them together and solder them together? Yeah, you can. And you'll add capacitance to your coil. Can you put a top load on your coil and add capacitance that way? Yes, yes you can. So it's a simple understanding. It's not necessarily difficult, but making the switch and getting it to switch is. So you want to switch from the state where it oscillates with all of the winding to me reducing the winding. Okay, I'm going to change the oscillation state. I'm going to go from a perfect oscillation to a non-oscillating state. That's going to be my trigger. That's going to apply my heat into my cold system. In the center of the vortex, as soon as I hit that Tesla coil to put some heat into it, and as soon as it goes right into that vortex and that gravity fire, that's when it jumps. That's the state you need to be in. The vortex is extremely important to build right. Like I said, don't go playing around with this thing and thinking you're just going to throw a bunch of hot high voltage into it, into a uh, magnetic state and it's going to work. No, you have to build it. Why? Because when the ether comes in, it's a different energy uh, when it creates that vortex than it is from your high voltage, from your systems of AC and DC. We're trying to get to a more of an earth energy, an ether energy. Guys, it's so important to build it right. You have to put things in order to do it. That's why I do so much testing on this. Sometimes it looks like I'm not getting anything achieved, but I can tell you right now I'm getting a lot achieved. So where are we at with this thing? I, say it, I keep saying it's doing special things. Guys, it's, it's starting to... You see my videos when I run the motors out of control, right? And the thing just vibrates like this. Well, it's doing that now. And I don't have the motors out of control. As a matter of fact, these motors are slow as heck. They're fan motors. They can't go that high. I do not use DC motors in this. You know, they go super high RPM. It's very low RPM because the mass of this craft is so much that you don't need a high RPM. If it was smaller, I would need a high RPM. It's bigger. I don't need a high RPM. So we use different motors for this. So it, it it's a full understanding of this, guys. I don't know exactly any more than tell you, that, but it's, you know, it's on the ground and it, it's going like this. And once in a while, it'll, it'll bounce up. But I don't want to give it a state of, hey, it's lift yet, because it's not. It, it's creating a field, and because it's creating a field in there and it's creating the vortex, it is, it's jumping a little bit, which means that I have something triggering before it should. I have heat in the system that I shouldn't have, and I'm trying to work that out. As soon as I can work that out where I can trigger on my own, we're going to be all right. And I think it has to come down to my high voltage 
it's just a bit too hot. It's got too much heat to it and I need to reduce it. So I'm working on a new circuit for that and I'm just going to put in my variable circuit where I can change the voltage and amps and everything like that. It'll change the heat and I think that's the way to go. So once that's done, we should get a heavy bump out of this thing. Like I said, it's in a special state now, but we want to see it bump. And guys, like I said, the video footage on this, I'm not necessarily going to release it until it does it. Okay. That's just the way it is. It's going to be one of those things where it'll move around a bit and nobody will understand it. Half people say it's a joke. Half people say it's good. And I'm not dealing with that. It's going to go and bump off the ground. I know there's more energy in it because I know I've created the vortex. Just have to stop triggering it too early. I need that heat out of the system long enough so that when I hit it, I can get heat through the whole thing. Now, if you can understand that, you'll know where I am. Now, I didn't say it in the most complicated words that I could, and I don't plan to. I, I try to say things very simply so that everybody can understand them. Because this whole thing is so complex in the way that it's working, it, 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 it takes some time to get there. And you can say a bunch of high fluting words, and I know a lot of people do, and they sound great doing it. I don't. I sound better just explaining it like normal. And I think most people can grasp the fact that there's a special energy in the Tesla coil. There's a special way that it's done. The high voltage is important in the way that it's done and it's built right. Magnets that are too, too, too much heat gets into a system and you're going to break it down too fast. Again, you have to remember the center is a cold vortex and it produces a lot more energy. The outside is hot not going to produce a whole lot of energy because it's burning the energy off. We're getting it colder, so it's storing the energy. We're hitting an energy amplification by building the vortex. I can't say it any better than that. And just understand this, we had a conversation on the Tesla coil as it discharges, and you, you have to understand the amplification on this thing. It amplifies at the end, like this, but then it always comes back down and then it goes out. So what you're going to get is you're going to get a spike in the amount of uh, megahertz in this thing in your Tesla coil, right? Because we moved on from kilohertz. It's getting the kilohertz as you go like this. Kilohertz, kilohertz, megahertz right here. Then it discharges. So when you hit your amplification, it's at the top. It amplifies. Then it comes back down and discharges. So you're going to go from a very high megahertz state down to almost nothing and then discharge. And that's the way that it works. That's why it looks a little different on the oscilloscope. When you look at it, we're looking for the amplification and discharge. Again, we're discharging okay, everything, putting it into that hot state when we push the button. So just if you can think of that, we're taking a cold state vortex and we're putting applying heat to it. So we're getting a heated vortex right there and that's when i'm going to use the energy now as i flip it back it's going to go back to a cold one at that point it'll have enough energy in the system or ether in the system to stay in a hovering state i hope i explained it well enough i i'll try to do another video later on in, in the week or maybe next week but guys we're almost there it's just I'm trying to work out a few bugs in the system. I'm getting a little bit more heat than I want in my center plate, and I just got to eliminate it, which means just building a couple more circuits and then getting this thing to work out. Anyway, if you like what you saw today, like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things, guys. We're going to get there on this project. We've only been at it for six months, so let's just keep going, and uh, I'll talk to you guys all later. Have a great day.